everyone. In this series, we're looking at how to add inputs into a vMix production. Now, an input is any element that you want to include in your live video production. And in this video, we're looking at cameras. Live cameras really are the cornerstone of great live video production. They allow you to connect with your viewers and provide them with great content. Now, there are a few different methods to bring in live cameras into vMix, but today we're going to focus on those that you can use from the camera input section in the vMix input menu. Now this will cover cameras directly connected to your computer via USB, PCI Express, or perhaps a Thunderbolt device. Now if you've got an SDI or a HDMI camera, you're going to need some sort of capture device to be able to bring that signal into your computer. Now we have a lot of different videos on our website about internal versus external capture cards and a lot of documentation about what cards are supported in vMix. So before adding your camera into vMix, make sure that your capture device is compatible. So go to our supported hardware page to find out more information. Once you've confirmed that it will work with vMix, make sure that your drivers are up to date with the manufacturer. You should be able to download them from the manufacturer's website. Okay, so now that you've got your capture device in order, it's time to add a camera into vMix. So you just wanna to go to the add input section and then go to camera and then you'll be able to add the camera from your capture device. So we're gonna go to the camera drop-down menu. Now we have two capture devices installed here. We have an AJA Corvid 44, where we have four inputs here, and then we also have a Magewell Pro capture card as well. So we're going to select the Magewell card. Now if you're using a Magewell, Blackmagic, or AJA card, vMix should detect the settings that you have for your camera and capture device. So as you can see here, we're inputting via HDMI. The resolution of our camera is full HD and our frame rate is 2997 progressive. So if you check our master frame rate down the bottom, you'll notice that we are also using 1080p 2997 for our master frame rate. So we wanna make sure that all of our cameras are going to be using the same frame rate in our vMix production. Underneath that, you'll notice that it says video format is default. Sometimes when you add a camera via a capture device, it only works with specific video formats. So if you come up with an error after adding it, you may have to select something from that error message or double check with the card manufacturer to see what particular video format it supports. Underneath that, you can tick audio enable if you want the audio to come through from the camera and then select what audio input as well. Now, sometimes you might be using an interlace source for one of your cameras. So we're going to show you how to deal with interlacing right now. So we should go back to our AJA card here. Now you'll notice that vMix has detected it as a 5994i source. So that means that we need to tick this interlace box here to let vMix deinterlace the video. So you'll probably notice that if you've added an interlace source uh, and you haven't ticked this box, you'll see horizontal lines going across the screen when there's any kind of movement. So make sure that you always tick this interlace box if you've got an interlaced source. And we're gonna go back to the Majewell card and we're going to add it to our production by clicking OK. Okay, so now our camera is added to our vMix production and you can start using it like any of our other inputs. So now we're gonna go to the input settings. We click on the little gear icon and we can change the name of it so we can call this uh, main shot and we can change the category um, sharpen mirror and the main behavior here that you want to change is the automatically mix audio so in order to automatically mix the audio if you tick this box here it means that the audio will follow the video so if it goes into the output the audio will turn on and if it's not it will turn off now this is something to keep in mind so if you've got a microphone that from the camera that you want to use at all times, you may want to unselect this so that you're constantly using that microphone as opposed to it turning on and off when you switch to it. It's something that you might need to take a look at it, practice when you do your production and see if you want to turn that on or off. Typically, if you've got standalone microphones, you won't be using the audio from the camera, so you can turn that off. Now, the top right-hand corner, again, you can change the mouse click action and you will be able to see what your camera is sending here from the capture device, so the resolution, the frame rate, and whether it's deinterlaced or not. You can also create a virtual input by clicking the virtual input section down the bottom right hand corner, like so. Now on the left hand side, you'll see different menus for adjusting the camera shot. So I can change the color adjust. 
I can auto white balance. So what I would do is hold up a white sheet of paper in front of the camera and then click auto white balance and I'm able to white balance match all of the cameras. So if I had multiple cameras, I could use that method to check the white balance. Now I can also do a black stretch and white stretch here as well on the video. Next we have the color key. So I can create a chroma key of the green screen behind me. So I can key out the green. So I would select it and then use the eyedropper to pick a dark green color. Uh, and then we have some presets here. So I'll pre press the second preset. And then we don't have our lighting set up today for the green screen. Um, so I'm just gonna tweak this a bit. Um, so that's removed it there. Um, and I can then use that as a green screen and drop something behind me. So turn that off. Uh, we also have a luma key as well. Underneath that we have the positioning so I can move it around, I can crop it. I can like crop myself out and put myself somewhere if I needed to. The multi-view section. Now the multi-view allows you to add multiple layers to your production. So I can add up to 10 layers on each input, create another input and add my camera to that as well and create all sorts of different things. Now we have another video on the input multi-view uh, but I'll give you a very quick example of that now. I've got to add input. So now we have a second input, just close this virtual input that we created before and then I'm going to go to this here. So I can hold down shift and drag that in, and move it around, create a layer or I can go through and go to the position and then I can position things also, zoom, crop and that sort of thing as well. So that's what the input multi-view section does, it allows you to add layers to a production. Next we have triggers, so for example I can when I transition into my camera, I can overlay perhaps a title. So I could go to the overlay section. And so when it transition in after five seconds, I can overlay my title. Um, or I could turn on my audio or start streaming and recording using the triggers section here. So we have a full video about triggers as well. You can set up tally lights for the cameras in this section. Um, you can check out our documentation on tally lights. PTZ, so if you're setting up a PTZ camera, you can connect it to the network and then control it directly from here. And in the advanced section, you can add a frame delay. Okay, so adding a webcam is just the same as adding a normal camera in vMix. So we just go to the camera section, and then from the drop down, select our HD Pro webcam C920. So we just want to make sure that all the information here is correct. It matches our frame rate, our resolution. Uh, we don't want to use the microphone here. We're just going to turn that off as we have our um, audio microphone already turned on here. And then we're just going to click OK. So that's how simple it is to add a webcam. Uh, some cameras only accept certain resolutions or frame rates, so you just need to check that when purchasing. Uh, and if you go into the settings of a webcam, you can also go into the advanced settings uh, and go to the actual properties of the webcam. So if you have the Logitech um, camera set up, you can actually go in and make changes here in regards to the um, camera. So that's in the advanced section here. So that's how you add cameras into vMix. If you have external capture devices, it'll work the same as one of the internal devices that we showed before. So if you have a USB 3 device or a Thunderbolt capture device, uh, you'll be able to add the camera in the same way that you added the webcam and you added it from your PCI Express capture card. Okay, so before I go, I've just set up a mini production here where I've got the camera and a video. So if I want to overlay the camera, I can use that just by pressing the buttons underneath. I can set them up in the overlay channels. Um, I can do a quick cut to the, uh, to the camera, I can do a quick play to the camera and then I can also show uh, a larger shot of the camera using the monitor um, and then I could turn the audio on and off if I needed to, if I had the audio set up. So thanks for joining us. That's a quick look on how to add cameras uh, and webcams into vMix. If you have any questions, please let us know via the website and we'll see you on the next video. Click to watch another exciting vMix tutorial.